Welcome back. Climate change and the role that big oil can play in a cleaner energy future sure to be hot topics at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland this year. Climate activists marched in downtown Davos over the weekend to demand stronger climate action from attendees. A number of CEOs from major oil firms will be at the Economic Forum. And all this as oil investors face a highly uncertain 2023. Rising demand from China, the war in Ukraine, and the threat of a global recession will all surely affect the price of energy in the months ahead. Also, OPEC's production response will be crucial here, as well as the ability of U.S. producers to ramp up supply if needed. The president and CEO of the American Petroleum Institute, Mike Summers, joins me with his take on the oil industry outlook this year. Mike, welcome to the program. Great to be with you, Rahel. So we've heard a lot already this program just about the need for clean energy and the transition, and yet you argue that oil production also needs to be ramped up and the administration needs to do more to prioritize the oil industry. And I wonder, can you do both at the same time? You absolutely can do both. In fact, what we've found over the course of the last decade is that one of the reasons why we've been able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the United States from 2005 to 2020 wasn't necessarily because we invested a lot in so-called green technologies, but actually because we were able to pursue a fuel switch from coal being the number one source of power in the United States in 2005 to natural gas now. That's led to increased levels of uh, our reductions in uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. We've cut greenhouse gas emissions here in the United States at levels not seen anywhere else in the world. In fact, the United States has actually cut our greenhouse gas emissions almost as much as the European Union has combined uh, in that time period. We want to continue to do that. And the way to do it is we need to continue to invest in uh, oil and gas here in the United States because natural gas is the reason we've been able to cut uh, greenhouse gas emissions here in the United States. And we want to export that kind of uh, greenhouse gas cutting uh, throughout the world. So what type of policies are you looking to, to see from the White House and the administration uh, look, heading into 2023 and beyond? Well, there are a couple of different things that they can do. First of all, we need to open up the uh, outer continental shelf in the Gulf of Mexico for more production. Those are the lowest carbon barrels of oil uh, in the world. We need to continue production in the United States. This administration has actually sat on uh, the, the so-called five-year plan in the Gulf of Mexico, meaning that no leasing can occur. The only leasing that's, occur that's occurring under this administration has been mandated by federal law uh, by the Inflation Reduction Act. We also need to pursue more onshore production. We need to have lease sales in uh, the onshore, particularly uh, in the Permian Basin and in, in New Mexico and other federal lands. So those are two things that we can do to produce more here in the United States, because we know the world is going to continue to need lots of oil and gas into the future, particularly with the ongoing uh, terrible war that's going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The other thing that this administration can do is they can cite new pipelines to so that we can get this uh, oil and gas from where it is to where it needs to be. Mike, I want you to respond to a comment earlier. We spoke to Andrew Forrest. He is the chairman of Fortescue Metals, uh, one of the largest mining companies in the world. And they are uh, sort of they are sort of moving, transitioning to green energy as well. And what he said to me was the more you use fossil fuel, the more expensive it becomes, the more it's weaponized. How would you react to that? Well, that's one of the reasons why we need to produce more here in the United States. You know, unfortunately, we've become reliant too much on regimes that are hostile to Americans, America's interest. We have the product right here. The solution is right here in the United States. We just need to pursue it. You know, in Pennsylvania alone, for example, there's over 400 years of natural gas under Pennsylvania that we even know of. Ohio is another great example of where we can get more natural gas and more production. We can produce these products here in the most stable regime in the world, here in the United States, uh, if, we, if we just uh, unleash this uh, power that we have have we can do it uh, but it's going to require politicians to work with the oil and gas industry uh, to pursue these policies that we've outlined in our make move and improve plan which you can find at api.org and mike speaking of politicians i mean it's certainly no secret that relations between the industry and the white house were quite tense uh, more tense than others at certain points of the year what is the state of relations now 
We have a great ongoing dialogue with this administration. We we talk with them almost every single week about policies that they can pursue. We've solved a lot of problems that uh, you know uh, uh, you know re regular citizens don't even know about because of some of that that ongoing dialogue. We want to work with them. We want to work with both sides of the aisle to pursue these policies. It's one of the reasons why we put out this new plan uh, here just last week because we believe that if uh, politicians work together with the industry to develop these solutions, we're going to be able to get some stuff done this year, even in divided government. I'll remind you that in 2015, one of the most important policy changes that we were able to get done in the last two decades decades was lifting up the crude oil export ban uh, that was in place since the 1970s. That was done when Republicans controlled Congress and Barack Obama was president of the United States. And our studies show that we're producing two and a half million barrels more a day as a consequence of that policy change that was done under divided government. We can get stuff done under divided government if both sides of the aisle work together with industry. And that's what our Make, Move and Improve plan is all about. Mike, what do you see as the biggest risk to oil prices for consumers into 2023? Well, there, I think there are a lot of uncertainties out there. We don't predict prices, uh, but you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, particularly with uh, the uh, unlocking of China right now. That could re lead to uh, increased uh, demand in China for American products and world products. So that is one uncertainty that uh, that we're seeing right now. But you know, a lot of the downward pressure on oil prices is a result of economists predicting a potential recession, which of course would lead to less demand uh, for these products. Uh, we're very bullish on. On, uh, the prospects for American energy going forward. We have the best resources in the world in the Gulf of Mexico and the prolific Permian Basin and the Bakken in North, North Dakota. We have a lot of opportunity here in the United States. That's not even to mention Alaska, which, which has been uh, one of our most prolific uh, uh, regions in the United States, or Pennsylvania, where uh, this industry started. So we have a lot of opportunity to uh, invest more and to unlock these resources for world consumers. Yeah. Interesting, Mike. We'll have to leave it here, but it's so interesting, the global recession fears. You know, I wonder sometimes if investors are perhaps reacting a bit too strongly, because when I talk to energy experts about what we actually see in terms of global consumption demand during times of recession, the, the impact is pretty marginal. I think less than 10 percent if you look at the last six recessions or so. So sometimes I think the reaction might be a bit knee jerk, but we'll have to wait and see. Mike Summers, thank you. Thanks for help. Yep. He is the president and CEO of the American Petroleum Institute.